So, uh, what's going on YouTube? Doing you guys another video from the dungeon. As you can see, I pretty much got the interior set up <clears throat> in the um, Gen 8. I decided to go with um, chassis mounting the interior. Uh, it actually came with some pretty cool stuff. I'm going to show you guys here <clears throat> real quick. Um, some, some neat stuff, I think. Some neat stuff. The, uh, I mean, I detailed it. I was going to get further into the interior, but, um, I just detailed it up about the, you know, I, best I could get it. I was going to do some accents here on the seats, and I still might do some accent here, maybe in black through here, and then the backs of the seats in black, and then I may go ahead and do this console piece up in black. I don't know. Uh, how I have it painted is how my 78 had the interior done up in it. Um, this is basically almost the same color my 78 had, uh, my Scout. So, um, anyways, I'll turn it around here so you guys can get a better look at everything here. Uh, let's see, spin it this way. Um, let me pull the camera up here, guys. I'm going to have to move the camera. I, I set it up a little different than uh, everything that came. Hold on, I bumped my... Okay. I set it up a little different than how everything kind of came uh, originally. Um, you can see here I've added some other stuff too. I picked up a couple cheap uh, CBs here. Let me zoom in a little bit. Maybe you can see the stuff better. Move the camera here. Uh, got a little CB here. It's just uh, Gorilla tape clear you know two-sided tape to the bottom of my dash got it mounted up the same as my uh in my real jeep and then i've got the little mic here where you can just reach over and grab it i haven't got a driver for this yet i'm going to i just haven't messed with it um i will show you how some stuff i changed up i added a little can of soap pop here okay soda whatever Whatever you call it in your neck of the woods. I try to do a little detailing here on the radio. Like the old style. Kind of had that yellowish orange tint. To the old AM style radios. And the little red indicator that you turn the dial. And it would move kind of there. I'm still working on getting the gauges. Uh, I've got a few things in the work to get. You know my speedometer. Then probably like your gas gauge. Would have been I think it was over here on the scouts. And then your your temperature. Engine temperature. This, this mount's really good inside the inside of here. Uh, it's real tight. You can actually almost pick up the entire rig, okay, from, you know, with uh, with how this is mounted in here, and I'll show you. The back seat, let me pull this, is just uh, Velcroed in. You know, I'll be leaving it in here either way. You know, not, I don't have a use to be taking it in and out. And you guys might say, well, that's going to be impossible to get your battery, you know, because your battery tray is under here. And this is nice because you can still fit a decent sized battery in this thing if you want. I mean, I, I run the small packs, uh, you know, in mine. You know, I run the smaller packs in it. So either way, it's no big deal. But I'll show you what you do is these, I'm using, the, it comes with two different mounts. You can body mount it um, or you can, you know, chassis mount it. Let me back the camera up here a little bit. Zoom it out. So you got... You just shove forward on your on your interior. Let me get it popped back in here. Um, it's kind of a pain in the butt at first until you get it wore in. Okay, it shoves forward on these sliders. And then you just, uh, let me get it worked up here. You just lift up. There's one side loose. And then there's your other side. Okay, it takes a few seconds. There's the interior. You take your interior out. Uh, your battery goes in right here. You know, obviously in your tray. And then your interior, you got your little adjustable. You can make it as tight as you want. Um, here on your screws. You know, if you want to set it down real tight, you know, you can adjust your screws. And then they go in these little holes. Right here. Hole here. Hole here and hole here. And it just, 
you know the heads of the screws you just line them up in your hole it's you know takes seconds guys i got that side in uh, that side in and then you just slide it back and that locks your interior lines back up with your body perfect um and you're good to go so you know these mount let me take this back loose again and i'll show you there we go get it slid out of there there's that one there's that one Okay, so you got your mounts here that comes in the kit. And like I said, this is from RC Addicts. I mean, yes, it's 3D printed. I know a lot of people don't like 3D printed stuff, but, you know, I, I don't care. Uh, if you paint it and you sand it and do a little work to it, you know, and the lines that I left in here, just, you know, I think that makes it look more like a real scale interior to me. Um, you know, because the seats in these Scouts had these in it anyways. Okay, so, I mean, that's... That looks like a, you know, looks legit to me, so. Oh, and the shifter knob is just a pin that I epoxied in, um, you know, and then bent it to make it look like the shifter. I still got to paint the four-wheel drive shifter knob. I haven't done that yet. It needs to be detailed out. There's the interior a little better. And I'm still working on it, guys. It's a work in progress. Uh, I just wanted to get it all painted up and get it done up, uh, yeah, you know, that, that's, that's just, it's like I said, I'm still working on it and the gauges and everything, so, um, I, I'm actually pretty happy with it, so, but anyways, and it's not super heavy, um, to be truthful, the most of your weight is farther forward here in your dash, so your, your weight is farther forward, which is nice, uh, so you're not really gonna throw your weight off that much, plus that's what I figured, uh, having it mounted to the chassis would be better than throwing it in the body. Uh, you know, I mean, I know the, that might not make that much of a difference, but anyways, I just figured chassis mounted would be better. So anyways, what we got, you got your two screw or your four screws here that go into your sliders. What you do is you have to mount this. These mounts go as far in on your, on your chassis sliders, your side four mount here. Um, so what I did was. You just take your furthest end screws out, one here, one here, same on this side. The furthest end screw here, it comes in from up here. I'll show you here what I'm saying. Uh, you got your screws that go in like right here, okay? So you'll take that screw that comes in from the top, and you'll need longer screws. Um, it didn't come with the screws, and the ones that come out of this factory to do it this way aren't long enough, so you just need a little bit of longer, you know, uh, to do it, so... You know, not much, just probably about a screw with me. You know, I can't remember how long the ones were I used. Um, hold on a second. I'll actually give you a measurement for one of them. Because you don't want to go too super long. Uh, hold on a second. I'll get my mic out here. All right. I got my mic here. And then uh, dip my digital caliper. And then I'll measure the screw for you, the length that you'll need to do it properly. A 15 millimeter screw or up to like a 16 will do in length. Uh, you know, in like an M M3. Uh, that'll that'll get you about perfect because you know you don't want to bust this 3, 3D printed stuff, the plastics and stuff. These seem these are made really well. Um, very very nice. You know, they're they're beefy. So. Um, Anyways, they just you they, you you screw them in. The mount comes in from the bottom, one here, one here, and it just goes up into your mount, and it actually screws to your floor, so it's good and stable. I like that. Uh, you know, I, I really like that a lot. Now, if you're running, most people don't. They upgrade the electronics. You know, I'm still running the stock um, ESC, which is working out fine for me right now. I am going to upgrade it to a Hobby Wing 1080 eventually. But I'm not, you know, I, I'm super impressed with the Holmes Hobby, even with the stock ESC here. It's way smoother. I have dropped down to a uh, 16 tooth. Uh, the I went with uh, the Robinson Racing uh, pinion gear on here in a 16 tooth. You know, I, that's only one tooth down. I did slow it down a little bit, not considerably, but uh, I did go down to a 16 tooth is what I'm running for my gearing. Uh, 
just to give me a little more, I guess, control over it. Uh, I, I still kind of like having the speed a little bit. You know, that's just me personally. Uh, that's just what I like. Um, all my electronics are almost all in the stock spot, but back to what we were talking about before. We have the ESC right here. I had to just move it in a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you can kind of tell there. Let me get the camera real quick what I'm talking about. Um, I just had to move the ESC over. You know, it's still sitting perfectly on the floor, uh, the mount here. So I just had to move it in so I had room, you know, to mount my, you know, actual interior mount there. Uh, that's just how I liked it. I know the wiring is kind of crazy, you know, I got my winch and everything, and then I moved all my, I've got one of the ones that has the switch hook up here, and it's just double-sided taped to my winch controller. Um, I may end up doing some other stuff with this, but I've moved all this up here, which makes it a lot easier, because all of my hookups for my lights and everything else on my body is just bam, 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 and then throw the body on and you're ready to rock and roll. Uh, you know... I may clean up the wiring a little more later. I, I don't know. I really like this setup right now. You know, that that's just, I, I really like it. Uh, it's nice, and I have extra hookups here. I can hook up other, you know, whatever I want to hook up. Maybe I want to put a sound control module in it later or something. Uh, I already have it here, and I like this because it gives you the option if you're in the daytime. You can hook everything up and just turn it off, and you're not, you know, you're not, you know, using any more battery power or anything. Um... I just really liked it. By the way, the Enjora winch is still working just fine. I haven't had any problems with it. Uh, but anyways, this is straightforward. It's not too bad to put the, you know, the mounts on here. You just got to have a couple, you know, the longer screws that come up uh, to secure these. And I, and I actually prefer having the interior stay here on the chassis. And it's easy if you're working on the truck to remove it. You don't even need tools to take it off. So... Uh, and then you got one screw and one screw and then these come off. You know, I mean, it's it's, it's nothing to it. You know, it's super easy. I, I, I really think they did a bang up job with it. That's just my opinion. You know, uh, some people may not like it, but I, I do. You know, and I like how everything here on the interior, they give you stainless steel hardware uh, to secure everything. It's M3 stuff. You know, it's 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 really well made, guys. It's, it's a super good, uh, you know, interior. Uh, it's not crappy, thin, flimsy junk. You know, it's a it's a very nice interior. Uh, you know, I uh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to a guy that may be able to 3D print me the inserts too. I'm just I'm not. And then I found some decals that uh, online that I can do for my gauges. I'm just not real sure what I'm gonna go with. You know, personally myself, I'm happy with it. Uh, like I said, I don't. You know. It's inside. Everything's kind of hidden with the body on. So, but anyways, I mean, I actually like it. I like the way it came out. Uh, I, you know, I wish I'd, uh, I may, like I said, change some of this around still. Uh, I've got some cool stuff. I've got a pack of Marv sm uh, smokes that are going to go in here, you know, and then I'm going to get a cool, I'm not sure about, you know, what figure yet. Uh, I got to be careful because, you know, I'm not moving this. I like the the, the box for my electronics here from from red cats really nice i don't want to move it you know i could easily take my receiver out of the box and then move my winch controller i could put my winch controller probably up here uh and then truthfully i could probably mount my winch controller and my box up there and have this entire floor open but uh, I'm, I'm actually real happy where it's at right here so uh you know i've got to find a scale figure that i like that i can get fi uh, you know fixed in the interior uh probably what i'll end up doing here and i'm gonna adjust these i'll show you here adjusting these i'm gonna tighten this side up just a little bit more okay and then let me get this back in There we go. It's just as easy as that, guys. Boom. Locks it in. And then, uh, you can pick the whole rig up almost. It's real heavy in the nose, but you can pick the whole rig up, uh, with that. So, uh, let me get that locked in. I didn't get it locked in all the way. 
There we go. So, anyways, there's the interior. You know, it's pretty cool. I think everything came out. Like I said, this is bonded and ain't going nowhere. It's good. I still got some painting to do. I did leave it to where I, I modified this. I guess they want you to epoxy the wheel or a column in. And I'll tilt this up here uh, to the... Well, if you can find, I went too far. Um, I should have turned my brightness up here on my screen. I actually drilled into the column and put an M2 coarse thread, a longer screw in here, and then a washer behind it to where I can still move my wheel. Because I thought about making mounting a micro server here, running a Y harness into my servo, plugging them in together and making me a horn to where the steering wheel would turn when the wheel turns. So that means I have to have a super articulating uh, armed uh, figure in here. So uh, that's why I left this where this would turn uh, on its own like this. You know, I, I didn't want to fix it to where they... And then I made this a telescoping... Uh, to where I could telescope the wheel in, you know, for whatever figure I have. That's why I use the screw, because this actually column's longer, and you can bring it out to whatever you have in the figure in the seat. So um, I ended up doing that, just to, you know, that way that'll add a little more, I'd add a little more realism if I wanted to go with the steering wheel functioning. Um, back to, but anyhow, that's it for the interior, guys. Like I said, the interior, I think I've probably got, I already had all the paint. Um, here and everything for the interior, which you've seen on the other video. Uh, so, you know, I don't have any money in the paint supplies. It was actually paint that I had at my mom's house and the paint I had here. And then I helped my son does some modeling stuff. We build some model cars and stuff. So rest of it, I just, you know, used testers, uh, modeling enamel for everything else to detail the interior and stuff. So, uh, I am going to, um upgrade like this cb is probably going to be in here temporary you know not that i'm totally not happy with it um you know i've got a buddy that hates that cb he says they just don't look real enough or whatever but now nah, it looks real enough for me um work you know like i said it works for me i don't got a problem with it but i'm thinking about i'm wanting they actually have one uh, Scale Kings, I think maybe is the company. I can't remember. They make the one that has the backlight in the CB, and I thought that'd be real cool. I'm not sure if I, you know, I'm not, I'm not paying what they want for it, 20 bucks just for a, you know, 3D printed uh, CB. I just got these really cheap, um, and he sent me actually another one, and then a couple other extra uh, scale stuff too when I got these. So uh, for like the six dollars and something that I paid because he dropped the, you know, free shipping on it. Is all I ended up giving for these was like six bucks. So uh, I'm happy enough with it right now. Uh, but anyhow, back to what I was going to move on to. This uh, Holmes Hobby 12 turn I'd highly recommend for the Gen 8. If you guys are looking for a lot better of a motor, that's just me personally. You know, you probably get away you know of course you can change your opinions obviously you can change your opinion um and then you'll have a you know you can throw the higher turn motor like a like a 10 turn or whatever i wouldn't recommend it if you're going with the chrome master sports that's just how you know that is this 12 turns perfect for this truck uh even with the you know factory stock esc it's it's perfect guys so um but anyhow, that's where we're at so far. Uh, some other details. The body. I had to do some reinforcing to my body because I was having some problems with it pushing down in the back. Um, so I did some... And then I didn't like with the body on seeing... Looking in through the window, you could see the crappy, the wiring and stuff for the lights and stuff. So uh, I remedied that... Uh, hit it with some black, you know, just Gorilla Tape, all covered all the sides, because uh, I didn't like seeing that wiring and everything, and I wanted everything good and secure, so, and then, uh, like I said, I had to add some reinforcement to the sides for some reason, I don't know what was going on, it's a natural, you know, Lexan, um, you know, which, another thing, my buddy, like CD, he hates uh, <laughs> the CB, he hates the Lexan bodies, 
you know, I don't have a preference. If something looks cool, it looks cool. Uh, that's just me. Um, you know, I appreciate about any build. Now, nah, but uh, anyways, I had to reinforce it because I was getting some weird sag over here with the weight of my uh, uh, roof rack. So, anyhow, I'll bring the body up here because I want the body on it when I go through. You know, this is what I was saying about my wiring. It's easy, plug and play. Everything's moved to the Ford, Ford out of the way. You can't see none of my wiring or anything now. Let me get a set down on here. There's my body. Body on the old scout. Let me back the camera up a little bit here if I can. I don't know if I can. So I can get these details in for you guys. Let me move it. Um, and I'll just go ahead and go over the rest of the scout here. Let me turn it sideways. I got the weight sitting down on it. She is sitting at the lowest position on the shocks right now i've lowered it all back down this is how i'm going to be running it pretty much all the weight is added that needs to be added to it i have switched out to the proline crawler 4.7s bf goodrich uh i think these are bf goodrich aren't they uh, hold on a second yeah bf goodrich the crawlers I like these better than, I don't know where my landmines are. I do like these better. I am sitting on the Injora Standard Non-Deep Dish Scale Wagon Wheel White Spokes. I have got like three or four trail sessions on these so far, and they've held up great. Um, they weren't easy, but they weren't terrible to mount the Pro Lines to. Um, but they weren't, you know, it wasn't an absolute nightmare or anything like that. Some more details I have added to it, and this thing is getting heavy. You can see I have added the worn RC full-wheel drive scale hubs, you know, replaces your nut. You know, I have the worn, and these are super nice guys. They're all, you got to lock tight them all up, keep them together, and you need a tool, an installation tool. Don't try to mar them up with pliers and stuff like that. Um, you need the installation tool. Uh, but I've got those on both sides to add, you know, a little more scale, you know, on it. And the worn hubs is what you would have on it. What would be on that for aftermarket hubs when you broke a factory stock hub on the Scout, you would have went with worn or mile marker, you know. And then you need this tool. I gave you guys the part number in an earlier video. There's the tool. Um, get the camera to focus. Focus, 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 focus. Um, and it just goes on your... You know, you're, you're, let me turn the camera down here. I don't want to get too long of a video either. I'm boring you guys, so. Um, you know, your tool just snaps in your hub like that right there, and then you just tighten it down, you know, because it's got the, for your, you know, your wrench or whatever you're using. Uh, and then I'm going to get the other ones for the rear here. Turn it around. For the rear, I'll be taking these off and the RC four-wheel drive, like the center caps, like you would have. I haven't there. I, the only ones I can find were black. I haven't really looked that much though. But I was thinking about getting like the chrome ones or whatever, because most of your white spokes from the '70s and '80s would have had like a chrome cap um, on them. But anyhow, you know, I, I'm not too. I'm not worried about it right now. I'll get those later. And then I'm pretty sure the same tool is used to install like your chrome. But I'll probably go ahead and get them. This is how I'm going to keep it. The, the, the RC full drive lights or deep dish aren't going back on. I did have to pick up. It's going to be hard to do with everything on it here. Um, the uh, I got the Club 5. They're basically they're 8 millimeter brass hub extensions. Because these wheels didn't have the backspacing that the RC full drive deep dish had. Uh, let me just turn it this way so you can see it better. Because we're talking about the wheels. Um, so I wanted to get them setting out, but I, you know, it's, this sets more like, um, you know, almost not a factory probably cause a scout wouldn't have been this wide, uh, from the factory. But if you'd have thrown, cause all white spokes from like the seventies and eighties, excuse me, they all have, uh, they're all backspaced that kind of be wider. Uh, the Chrome spokes, like the old Craigers, stuff like that, you're. 
chromes and your white spokes from the 70s, especially the 70s and early 80s, were all kind of spaced out. So, Plus, I didn't want to lose too much width uh, like I did on going with the, you know, that's why I like the deep dish. They were nice and wide, and I just ran standard hex. So, But anyways, those are pretty nice, plus they add a little bit of weight down low. Uh, I really like the Club 5 hexes. Uh, they're real nice. Um... Let's see, what else? That's probably about it. You know, everything, she tanks about up anything now, how I have it set up, so I don't really need any more weight. Uh, maybe later on down the road, I'll get the metal axle housings for it. I don't know. Uh, you know, I'll probably just wait until the plastic ones break before I do that. We do got the Club 5. I think I went over before. Uh, the door handles here that I just painted up. Um, the gas cap, I really liked, and then the rear, uh, the rear tailgate, lift gate, latch, and then I picked up some scale bumper sticker packs for it, um, you know, just a, some, some different stuff, the guys, <laughs> the Creek Squad stuff, uh, here, I got, you know, uh, just some different stuff that you'd see on, you know, around here on vehicles and stuff I've done. You know, the off-road stuff and everything anyways. Uh, but I think that's probably about it. And so you can get a better look at the interior. I mean, I really like it, guys. Uh, the interior from the inside here. Let me see. I don't know if you can. I just got the brightness on my screen turned down so far. It's hard for me to. But I think it looks pretty good, you know, the, the interior, uh, looking in here from the window. Let me pull the camera down without messing anything up. It's a pain in the butt. Uh, never mind the dirt and crud. See, I don't like being able to see the wiring and stuff in there, but man, I really dig the CB and stuff in there myself personally. But And then you got the back seat, which I don't even know if you're going to be able to make out the back seat in there. Maybe if I get the camera to focus. Gonna get me like a little dog or something to put maybe in the back seat. And then, you know, like I said, I've got a solo cup I've got to get glued in here. That came with the CB pack. That's cool looking. And then my little Marb cigarette pack's getting set up in there. Uh, there it is from this side. You know, I'm digging it. I like it personally. That's just me though. Um, but there she is. Guys. Oh, and something else I did add to it. Uh, the front of it, thanks to my... Um, my bud gave me the idea. Let me get it lifted up here. We got the RC four-wheel drive Rancho uh, steering stabilizer for your actual steering link here. Worked out perfect. It's real scale. It's nice and scale. Um, you get the truck sitting down. See if I can get... Man, that, I mean, I think that just looks sweet, guys. Adds a nice scale detail to the Scout. He said something about guys were saying they break and stuff. I mean, I'm not going to be doing any hardcore stuff with this thing. I mean, I guess, you know, maybe I, I do a little more hardcore wheeling than sometimes I realize. Um, you know, sometimes it's easy enough to get carried away with it. But uh, I, if it breaks, I'll just get another one. It was like 13 bucks or 14 bucks shipped. Um, you know, and, and you just I just took my digital calipers. And just miked the stock length one and then just put it all together. You build all this, make sure you lock tight it all together. Because uh, all this threads in together and everything. So you want to lock tight all your all your threaded connections and stuff. So, But uh, I think it looks real scale on there. I mean, that's just me personally. One thing I am going to be for sure, the C-hubs are either going to go to brass or they're going to go to aluminum. I am going to go ahead and upgrade those. I've got the brass inner and outers here, which added me about the right amount of weight I wanted to the front. But, you know, I'm definitely, and then, you know, like I said, eventually maybe if the, if the housings break, I'll go to aluminum. But I am running a semi-droop set up on my suspension. Um, that's how I have the suspension set up.